So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining the two study seminar series. Uh, it's a great time. I'm very excited. It's the first one of the semester, so that's awesome. Uh, I do see a few uh, faces that I've not seen before. So for anyone who is uh, maybe this is the first time coming to the seminar, a little bit of information about it. It's a weekly seminar series. This time, Thursday at noon. The annoying thing. Um, and it's basically just a venue to talk about tools, technologies, methodology, interest for researchers. They uh, might be fully developed, but they also may be in the middle of development and just get some feedback. So it's fairly informal. Um, so today's speaker is Yu Chan Gu, and he's a PhD student yeah. in School of Public Health and Biostatistics. And if you haven't signed in, the sign in sheet is to help with the pizza. So if you haven't, please do so, and I'll just have it back with me. Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Today I'm going to talk about a recent project I've done together with my colleague Shi Chen-sun. And the topic is the spatial expression pattern analysis for specially resolved transcriptomic studies. So here's the outline for today's talk. First, I'm going to briefly introduce some background of specially resolved transcriptomic techn techniques and then some uh, two existing methods for special, e special expression pattern detection. And then I'm gonna introduce our newly developed method, Spark, with some simulations and uh, real data applications. So recently, the uh, various specially resolved transcript transcriptomic technique has been developed to catch price uh, gene expression pattern with especially information on tissue sections and cell cultures. Some techniques are based on sequencing, like special transcriptomics, EVA, LCM, and TOMOSIC, and some of them are based on single molecular fluorescent institute hybridization, uh, like murfish and sickfish. Especially transcriptomics is uh, technique is developed, invented and developed in 2016 by a group in Sweden. It utilizes a spotted array of MRNA capture primers on glass slides. So each, so each spot here contains a special barcode unique to that spot and millions of individual MRNA capture primers. So when a tissue when a tissue section is attached to the glass the glass slide, the primers bind to the mRNA from the adjacent cells on the glass slide uh, on from the tissue, and the in, uh, reverse transcription start started, and uh, the resulting cDNA library contains special barcodes. So uh, following the library preparation, uh, the the, uh, the MR, uh, captured mRNA are sequenced uh, using standard uh, Illumina sequencing technology, and uh, the result, the special barcode on each generated transcript or generated sequence links the subsequent M uh, RNA seq data back to a spot on the uh, on the array or location on the tissue. So now it is possible to visualize any mRNA or combination of RNAs and uh, uh, perform complex bioinformatics analysis with a new spatial dimension. Sickfish is another technique developed by TyLab in Caltech and uh, to identify it, uh, it, this technique is also developed to identify the transcript yeah, directly in the cells, in the single cells, with the special context preserved. So to do so, each uh, uh, transcript are labeled with fluorescent probes in sequential round to read out a temporal barcode for each transcript. So, for example, uh, in the first round of hybridization, the mRNA is hybridized with the fish probes with purple dye. 
and then uh, image, and then uh, with the treatment of DNS, the proper is stripped. And in the second round, uh, the same problem are uh, coupled with purple dye, and the repeated the same process. And in the third round, it's, it's maybe coupled with like purple dye or yellow dye and so on. So as a result, there will be a unique temporal barcode for each mRNA. Uh, for the mRNA one, the temporal barcode is the yellow, blue, yellow. And uh, for the mRNA three, the uh, temporal barcode is the purple, blue, purple. And so by, count by counting the uh, barcode, we can get the uh, count of the mRNA or the chance rate of interest. <laughs> so there are two existing methods developed for detecting specially expressed genes. First one is the chat stick. Uh, this method is based on a marked point process where the points are, uh, are used to represent the special location for each cell and uh, the marks on each point represent the methylation, uh, the expression levels. So it tests the points in a pairwise manner to identify whether the expression level of are uh, dependent on the relative distance uh, on the relative distance between the points being analyzed. Uh, and in this method, they develop they construct four summary statistics statistics, but none of them have a theoretical distributions. So the uh, this me uh, this method relies on commutation to obtain the p values. The second method is the special DE, which is based on uh, linear mixed models. In this method, they partition the, the expression variation into two parts, a special component and a uh, random observation noise. So uh, it tests uh, the expression level uh, of, loca uh, of locations whether those expression level are covariant in a manner that depend on the relative locations, and uh, it relies on it it, this method constructs a likelihood ratio statistic and uh, rely on chi square distribution to obtain p values. And finally, it, it you, uh, use a minimum p value rule to summarize evidence across multiple spatial covariants. There are Several limitations of these two existing methods. First one, the data from the specially resolved technique are of counter nature, but both methods transformed the current data into normalized data before analysis. So modeling the normalized data instead of current data can be suboptimal and uh, which may lead, lead to a potential power loss. Second, uh, the specialty relies on asymptotic normality and also the uh, ad hoc rule, minimum p-value rule for constructing hypothesis, hypothesis tests. Therefore, it may fail to produce calibrated test statistics. And on the other hand, Chelsea is built upon the sophisticated models that is harder to interpret, and also it's because, because it's a uh, relies on the permutation to get the p-values. Uh, when the sample size is large, it's not computation is scalable. <laughs> so we de uh, here we develop a um, new okay. Do either of them take into account replicates? Uh, which method? Either one of them. Uh, it's for one sample, so it's in, uh for each sample, there are multiple cells or multiple spots. Hi. <laughs> so far, there is no method like focusing on multiple samples. I think most samples are also suffering the batch effects issue, and uh, also, because this is like, if you get a like tissue section, then you got the relative locations so for each spot or each cell. But if you have two samples, then how do you combine this? Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's a. So here we develop a, a new method Spark for de uh, to detect specially expression genes and uh, also addressing above limitations. So Spark is built upon generalized linear spatial model where uh, YI stands for the gene expression counts for the S sample and we assume YI follows the over dispersion, over dispersion Poisson distribution. Where the uh, B, render effects bi and xi captures the over dispersion, and uh, bi itself is a stationary Gaussian process capturing the spatial correlation pattern, which is categorized uh, by the kernel function k, and uh, the xi stands for the uh, residual of the random noise observation noise. So, uh, by, uh, through this model, we can change uh, the it, uh, special, specially expression gene detection can be translated into uh, testing the null hypothesis whether the tau one is equal to zero, because tau one is associated with the is a scaling factor associated with the covariance kernel k, and uh, we assume the Gene expression pattern for uh, is dependent on the kernel K if it's specially expressed. So the power of the such test is really depends on the selection of the K and how well the K, uh, the special kernel function match the true underlying special pattern uh, uh, for each gene. So, for example, the Gaussian kernel would be particularly useful to detect uh, genes displaying the patterns that are clustered in a focal area, and the theoretic, theoretical kernel would be especially uh, particularly useful to for those patterns like uh, which are uh, theoretical across the location space. Unfortunately, like the true underlying uh, this special pattern of each gene is uh, unknown. So, well, uh, to, and also it can vary across different uh, genes. So, to uh, for robust identification of the special expressor genes, we uh, total, uh, we consider a total 10 kernels, including five Gaussian kernels and uh, five theoretical kernels. And those, those five Gaussian kernels differ in the scaling parameter sigma. Okay. Are any of your periodic uh, kernels scale free? No, they it's. All, they all, so the, the, the periodicity has to have a, some kind of fix? Yes, so that's uh, uh, we. That's why we defer the P here. The P here is the periodicity parameter, which like, so some, I think that some gene gonna pre, uh, show some like periodical, but it's very close, and some are like very far away. So we use this P to cover those different patterns. And for the inference, we estimated a beta and a tau to under the null hypothesis where the tau one is equal to zero through the penalized quality likelihood. And for each kernel in turn, we construct a sports statistic and calculate the p-value based on a mixture cash square distribution. And afterwards, we combine those two, uh, 10 p-values from 10 different kernels through the Cauchy combination rule. That is, uh, we transform the p-values into Cauchy variables and then take a weighted submission of them as a test statistics and uh, evaluate the significance based on the Cauchy distribution. So this rule takes advantage of the submission of different uh, Cauchy variables, no matter whether they are correlated or independent. They are follows, approximately follows uh, uh, Cauchy distribution. So uh, by using this rule, we can 
summarize the p values into one p values without uh, lose control for the for the type one error. So, any questions? This is. Do you define the weight? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. In our paper, we just uh, set the weights to be 0.1, so it's equal weights for all the kernels. Because it's uh, when we submit the paper, the review also asked us like, can you estimate the weights? And we tried. It's really difficult because the and it's computationally very difficult, and the result is not stable. And uh, we try different uh, strategy and find find out the like average, because we do, don't know whether the gene is like particularly for some uh, particularly shows the pattern for close to any of those. So uh, average weights would be like a uh, reasonable selection. But uh, uh, in the future research, we're gonna. Uh, develop a new method to estimate accurately estimate the WI. So I admit I'm not really conversant with this. Okay. But am I correct that this method is robust if the hypotheses are dependent at the point? The hypothesis. So you have these p values that you're yes. transforming, then combining. If yes. The p so, values are from dependent hypotheses. Yes. You could use Fisher's method, for example. You have yes. to combine those other way. Yes. So there are like, multiple methods we can combine different uh, multiple p values into one uh, p value. But so based on our uh, experience, and we try different methods. We also try the minimum p value rule. But this rule allows us to control for the type one error, and the other rules either Created the deflated p value or inflated p value. Yes. So we performed the two set of simulations. In the first, uh, to and uh, to compare the our uh, to compare the performance of our method to the chess and the special DE. And in this, in the first setting, we utilize the special locations directly from the mouse or factory bulb data, which includes the two. 216 spots, and each spot in that data contains like about 100 cells. And we simulated four different patterns: the ran uh, random pattern for the null hypothesis testing, and three uh, patterns for the power analysis. So the first uh, the pattern one is the corresponding uh, represents the think. The mitral cell layer in the olfactory bulb, and the pattern two represents the nerve cell layer in the uh, olfactory bulb, and pattern three stands for the granular cell layer. And we, uh, in the null simulation, we simulated uh, 10,000 non SE genes in random <coughs> pattern. And uh, for the power simulation, we simulated 1,000 SE genes and uh, 9,000 non SE genes in the latter three patterns. So the difference for the non SCG, the difference for the SCG and the non SCG is in the intercept U here. So for the SC, uh, non SCG, so we set the intercept to be negative 10. And uh, for the SCG, negative 10 for all those spots. And uh, for the SCG, so we set the U to be negative 9 for the pink spots and the negative 10 for the green spots. So this, uh, with, uh, with this setting, the fault change in the lambda is about a 3. So this is the QQ plus. The x line is the expected distribution of the p values, and the uh, y axis is the observer distribution of the p-values. So if if a method is like uh, control the type of error perfectly, then we would expect uh, the white diagonal line here. And uh, you can, 
from the pulse, you can see that our method we, uh, spark, which is the pink, is uh, within the 95 confidence interval, and uh, some uh, some summary statistic from the statistic uh, produce reasonably calibrated the p values, while the spatial DE, which is the purple, produces the overly conservative p values, and this. Uh, the overly converted, uh, this may be due to the like minimum p value rule, and also because they are, uh, when they, they, it depends on the asymptotic normality to get the p values. But the, uh, I'm not sure if it's correct or not, it's just like the scaling parameter is the valence component. So it's actually for, uh, it's it says uh, the value should be always like greater or equal to zero. So the mixture p uh, has square distribution is like a sympathetic approximation. While our method uses the exact distributions for which is a mixture of chi square, so we can well control the p values. And so in the alternative results, we can see that so because of like uh, special uh, DE cannot well control for the type of errors, so we use the FDR to compare the uh, powers of different methods. So, it, uh, so from this uh, power result, we can see that Spark is always the most powerful method among the three, and uh, followed by the special DE, and the classic is like, there's almost no power for Chessica in this simulation setting. So, cause Chessica is also a good method which is published in the Nature Methods. So we, uh, the reviewers kind of like, okay, so it, the simulation setting is like favoring your method cause it's the simulation model is like very close to our method. So we conduct, conducted a, a second simulation setting which is followed in the Chessica simulation scheme. So here we first simulate the special locations for fixed number of cells through a random point of pattern person process. So and then we again we simulate four different patterns: random pattern, streak pattern, hotspot pattern, and the gradient pattern. And uh, for in the null simulation, we simulate one thousand genes, non-SD genes in random pattern. And for the power simulation, we simulate 100 SD genes and 900 non-SD genes in the latter three patterns. So for the non-SD genes, the expression values are, were just a bootstrap from the entire sick fish data. And the non uh, the SD gene, for the SD gene, we, there are two patterns, which are uh, streak pattern and the source four pattern. We just uh, bootstrap the expression values from the up quantile or low quantile of the six fish data. But for the gradient pattern, we first uh, sample the expression values from the six fish data and then order a fraction of those uh, values along the X line to create the gradient pattern. And so it's, uh, the result is very consistent with the previous simulation. Uh, Spark and Chelsea can pro uh, produce a well calibrated p values under the now simulate, uh, <coughs> under the now and the, under the alternative, <coughs> Spark is also the most, the other most uh, powerful one among the, those three methods. So, one may ask, we simulate under the Chelsea simulation scheme. But the power is still very low, almost unknown. So as this is because um, the in this simulation setting, uh, the SE strength is like the difference between the pink dots and the green dots. We uh, the full change between these two type of dots is only two. With and uh, in their original paper, uh, Chelsea can begin to have power or well, well, is able to detect genes when the SE strength 
uh, increase to 5, 10, or 100. And uh, under those simulation setting, uh, both Spark and Special DE are always full power. Because here we already uh, uh, attend 80% power at the FDR of 0.5. 0.05. So we we apply our, uh, our method to four different uh, real data sets. The first one is the uh, muscle. Uh, it's generated from the muscle factory bulb data, and uh, it's based on the special transcriptomic sequencing technique. Following the like, general rule, we filled out uh, genes that are expressed uh, in less than 10% of array spots and the selected spots with at least 10 total read counts. So uh, in total, we analyzed the 11,000 genes measured on 216 special locations. So this is the pivot plot of the uh, permutation. And uh, we can see that a spark is, 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 the result is consistent with the simulation. The spark, uh, spark produced well calibrated p-value, so uh, so does the chair-seek. But the special D is like deflated at the beginning and inflated at the tails. So this this inflation uh, presumably due to the minimum p-value rule, because if you have like 10 p-values and you always uh, for one gene, and you always select the minimum one. So this would uh, lead to the uh, inflation at the tail. And uh, at the right hand side is, is the power uh, comparison of three methods. So this result is also consistent with the previous simulation. Spark is the most powerful one across uh, for uh, is the most powerful method among these three. The, the audience left panel is permutation. Yes. The other panel is the actual data? Or is uh, it the, 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 no, it's the actual data. It's, uh, this is the yeah, power yeah. result, yeah, and this is the permutation. We permuted the data mm -hmm. 10 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't show the alternative QQ plots here. So, because we have a like, very high power, so we, uh, one would ask whether the gene we detected is like truly specially expressed. So we validate our result in three different lines. The first line is like we uh, in the original paper they are uh, they highlighted ten non mitral cell layer genes and. Uh, those genes are like, enriched in the matrix cell layer, and the Spark was able to detect H of, out of 10, while special DE can only detect 3. And some of those genes are like, very, those very clear special pattern. <coughs> and at uh, FDR of uh, 5%, uh, Spark was able to detect uh, 7, and just 70 gene, uh, special SE genes, and uh, which is like 10 times more than special DE. And so we validate uh, the second one. We validate our result is that we collect a gene list from an independent RNA seq, a single cell RNA study, which is uh, uh, and in that study they uh, created a list list of cell mark genes. Uh, cell type of mark genes, and so intuitively, the cell type of mark genes often times show the uh, expression patterns. Because uh, some uh, like similar gene tends to cluster together, and some uh, other genes are uh, similar genes tends to be like clustered together in the similar cells. So uh, in uh, so uh, in this in this data, we can see that 15% uh, of, of the SC genes identified by Spark only are in that list, while only 20% of the special uh, 
the SC genes detected by special DE are in that list. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the third line we, uh, the third line validation we did is that we collect, of, again, we collect a uh, uh, gene list of 3,200 genes from the harmonism database. Those genes are functionally related to the mouse or factory bulb. And uh, 27, uh, about 26 percent genes of special uh, de detected by Spark are in that gene list, and only 20 percent genes detected by special DE are in that list. So all these results very, uh, like pro provide your support that our method is more powerful, and the result is kind of valid. Any questions? Well, I have one from okay, online sure. from Dana. Okay. They said simulations and real data examples are showing measurements 10K to 1K genes, back to miss slowly expressed genes, or are there other contributing factors for low counts with either spatial sequencing or seek fish? How sensitive is Spark to filtering out poorly measured genes? Oh, so the problem is, if I understand correctly, the problem is more like about the filtering. And uh, I think uh, I didn't list the results here. The, when the gene, uh, when the gene expression are sparse, actually Spark is more powerful than, it's much more powerful than other methods. And uh, that's actually, I think, different. So in, the, in this result, the like, spark is like very powerful, much more powerful. And in the sick fish, in the simulation setting one, I think the, the difference in uh, the difference in the power is large. But in the simulation setting two, you can see that the difference is actually between the spark and the special D is not that large. It's because the, in the sick fish data, the Gene expression counts are much higher than the uh, than the data in the special transcriptomics. Because in the in the special transcriptomics, uh, we observe a zero inflation. It's not a, won't be zero inflation, but there are a lot of zeros. But in the sick fish data, the average count I remember is about twenty. So I'm not sure if I can answer, answer the question correctly, but uh, Spark is especially powerful when uh, comparing to other two methods. When the gene expression count is low, or at least is like below 10. So that number you had 11,274? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay. If I understood the question. Oh, okay. There's, 20, yeah. there's 25,000 protein. So why did you only end up with 11,274? I'm guessing that it's that filtering step. Yeah, right? yes. So this, uh, but I think that it's also due to the technique. <laughs> the, this technique is not that immature at that time. So the total gene, I think, before the filtering is only about 16,000 around it. And we do filter about 4,000 genes, because those genes are only either only expressed in one cell location. And of course, it's, uh, it doesn't make sense to like test those genes, because if, it's, or if the genes only uh, like showing one spot and that spot uh, contains like 100 cells and then the count is one or two. So that's why we use this uh, filtering step to filter the genes. And uh, we, uh, you will see uh, in, actually we use this like universal filtering rules, but in the sick fish data and the murfish data in the following, None of the genes, all the genes are kept with this uh, filtering rule. Okay, here are some examples uh, with uh, the 
Institute hybridization results from the Allen Brain Atlas. So, uh, <laughs> the top three genes are only identified by Spark, and uh, the bottom three genes are like uh, marker genes uh, highlighted in the original study and also highlighted in the special DE paper. So we can see that the genes only identified by the spark also shows clear special pattern, while those genes are missed by the special DE. And the really, uh, this gene uh, encodes a protein that is particular uh, in the expressed in the mitochondrial layer and uh, promotes the tangential to radio cell migration. Uh, transition and uh, the CRDM5 genes, which is enriched in the nerve layers, is critical for the cell cell adhesion. And uh, the CM CAMK2A gene, which is enriched in the uh, granular cell, is uh, very important for the thing. It's, a very, it's a very important for the dendritic morphogenesis. And so we also performed the uh, gene set enrichment analysis. And uh, the, in this part, the y axis is the log, negative log 10 p values from the pathway enrichment analysis. And uh, the dash line here represents the p value of cutoff of 0.05. Each dot here represents a uh, goal term or AECC term, a KGG term. And uh, uh, from this result, uh, we can see that the, this, re, uh, this result uh, re, uh, shows the importance of the dendritic uh, morph morphogenesis for the granular layer and uh, the synaptic connectivity and the three other additions for the nerve layers. And the second data we examined is the, uh, from the human breast cancer. This is also based on the special transcriptomic oh, sorry. We also going to talk about biological examples, or I just wonder why I can ask questions about it. Yeah, you can, you can just ask questions, OK. Uh, first of all, probably you shouldn't call the sample with our samples. Patients, but cells. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're doing this one gene at a time. Yeah. So why not uh, construct some meta genes? They're leaving behind gene gene correlation. Yeah. Like yes, that's a good question. So that's actually my next chapter gonna do. So it's we easy, right? Even if you just get GC one through ten, those ten values can be analyzed. Yes. Yes, but it's more like uh, the constructing the special kernel is a little bit complex in That's that. Right. Next question. So, so Marie is already asking why those ten kernels, you know, five Gaussian, five yeah. periodic, right? Have a lot of free ones. Why not just do a spatial Fourier transformation? Now is the flat power, yes. power spectrum. After you reject now, you can go back to see where the power is lying, right? Yeah. In the, in the zero part, or in which spatial frequency has the greatest power. You can do all sorts of post hoc pattern. Yes. Pattern uh, annotation, right? Yes, so answer to that question is, because basically uh, when we started this project, it's like we get the, idea from the special D and then we've thought of like following their framework like constructing those kernels. And then we realized okay because of the combi uh, p-value combination it's like a little complicated or probably not perform well. So we we kind of think in those like chance for your transformation stuff but that's uh that is that is even more complicated. <laughs> At least uh, at that stage, and of course, uh, when, also when we stop at the p-value, 
because initially we don't we consider the minimum p value rule and then uh we saw that like Cauchy combination right? and then that works and then okay why we bother using the Fourier transformation but uh, that's that's the another direction because like, I this is um, I my, that, yeah. no relatively simple should have been the first part, yes right? if you construct a 10 basis function but they are not orthogonal complete Yes. Yeah, but yeah, the so first thing is that we don't know whether that construction will work, right? Because no, no one knows the true underlying spatial location pattern. And uh, with this combination, we actually we summarize those p values. We actually don't know where, which is the uh, most powerful or most uh, likely one. So what we are focusing is trying to identify special genes, special expression genes, but not like where, how this gene, uh, whether this gene is like particular belongs to some particular pattern. <laughs> I have another question. Okay. Maybe maybe it's wrong, but would a would a simple method like relatively simple like the fused lasso work work in this for this problem? Where where regression is regularized typically by a by a plane? Oh so I'm not quite sure about okay. the fused lasso but so it's so in the first class, so you regular how oh. you order in the fused yeah. lasso the predictive variables are typically ordered in some way either yeah. in one d or two d and the coefficients of those variables are expected to be fused and covary yes so they are in and out of the model so you know saying like uh, so in the uh, in if we use the filter, so then which would be the predictors, the locations? Uh, right, kind of the active location. Yeah, the active yeah. location. So it's like if we use the filter, so then we, uh, in this data, uh, in the this presentation, all those data have two dimension locations. So uh, do you like one predictor for x and then one predictor for y, or would be one variable, right? But and then, yeah. then the regularization would come from the x and y gradient. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Also, not familiar with the Fiosa Russell. Cut this off. Yeah. So, are you actually running a pipeline from the road? Uh, I use so here the so we this result is based on the seven uh, seven hundred seventy two genes SC genes we identified. So you actually ran it on the game. So yeah. One one immediate question. Yeah. Although your method is more sensitive to low expression level mm -hmm. spatial dependence, mm -hmm. it still helps to be spatially dependent if you're expressed at all. And if you just took all of the genes that are expressed in a mouse olfactory bulb, this is kind of what you might expect to see, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, how different is this is this spatial enrichment from the enrichment of the things that are just well expressed, right? Yeah. And uh, the the this you should be wary of using that acronym for something where you're just doing functional enrichment. Because sometimes people mean something much more specific than that, that has a permutation on the samples in the back end. Very, and they mean that very, and they sometimes mean very specifically that. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes people just mean functional enrichment. So just be careful with that acronym. Yeah, okay. I, I agree. I assume that you actually use the SCA instead of the uh, We actually use. Now using the GSDF software, we use the cluster profile. Right, so just call it functional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, then you don't confuse people. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, again, the, the thing you want, 
and you know maybe you don't care that much because this is just but if you really wanted to know the functional enrichment, you would want to compare it against a control against a against a background. Yeah. You could either permute the spots or you know. And your your type one error control is pretty good, so I'm will, I'm willing to believe that this is enriched. But is this actually a different enrichment than what you yeah. would get just from what's well expressed? I think yeah. I think uh, I was a steel knight with that analysis then. Some of this, uh, there will be less uh, enrichment uh, term here. <laughs> yes. Well, and you might get specific spatial things. So transsynaptic yeah. signaling yeah. might then more strike it yeah. as something that's spatial as opposed to just present. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here is the, the second data, and uh, in this data we analyze the uh, about 5,000 genes measured on 250 spots. And the, uh, this is also the Kiko plot under the permutation, and uh, it's very consistent. Uh, it's very consistent with previous real data analysis and the simulations. Both Chelsea and the special D produce, uh, Barker produce well calibrated value, and uh, Special D has uh, inflated at the tail. And in this data, Jessica was able to identify 15 genes at a FDR of 5%. And uh, uh, special, uh, Spark identified 219. So uh, the left panel is the HSE staining of the tissue and the deep staining represents, uh, suggests the potential cancer regions. And so here, is, here we list, uh, in the linear data, in the linear paper, they listed like 14 non-cancer genes, and uh, Barker was able to detect 10 out of them, while other methods combined together can only detect seven. Okay, also we, uh, we performed a similar validation analysis. Uh, this time we con uh, collected uh, 1,100 uh, 1, genes from cancer man database. It is a literature-based database, and so the genes are in that in this list is either tumor suppressor, driver, or uncle genes uh, related to the breast cancer. And uh, Sparkle, uh, genes, uh, SC genes identified by Sparkle only are much uh, are higher than the gene identified by the special only. And also we com uh, obtain the fun uh, gene list uh, like functionally related to the uh, breast cancer, and uh, also again the percentage of the gene identified by Spark only is much higher than the percentage of the special gene identified by special. Okay, here are also some examples. So H uh, with the clear special pattern. So H L uh, so these five genes are only identified by Spark. And the HLAB is a member of human leukocyte antigen complex, which is, uh, which is important for the immune response. And you can see the special pattern of the, this gene, such as a, a tumor associated local immune response. And uh, EF1A1 is uh, uh, encodes a subunit of elongation factors. And uh, this gene is uh, highly expressed in the cancer regions and with a moderate expression in the, uh, in the lesser areas. So, and uh, it, it is hypothesis that, there is a hypothesis that this gene uh, promotes the cell migration. Uh, 
system promotes the cell migration uh, and uh, uh, through the influence, uh, through its influence on the uh, set cytoskeleton organizations. And the uh, ERBB2 genes, there are a lot of literature support. Uh, I think this is uh, the number one gene in the cancer mind database related to the breast cancer. Again, we perform the functional enrichment analysis here. So, yes, matrix metalloproteinase 14 and CD44 are also hot targets. Yes. So, I, would, I, I mean, this is an eye-popping slide to any cell biologist who sees it. Yeah, you did a good job, by the way, and I realize this isn't your area. But, you, you know, make yourself some notes so that when you give this talk in front of molecular biologists, yeah. It's like you're, always, you're, you're, you are able to, to because that, this, this is indeed hot, yeah. very hot hits. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I will introduce, uh, talk about these two genes. The MMP induced uh, CD44 cleave is, I think it's associated here with, also associated with the cell migration. And uh, it uh, uh, so facilitates the tumor metastasis. Well, I'll add CD44 is one of the most important stem cell markers in breast cancer. This is breast cancer, right? Yes. Right. It is so the breast. spotty expression of it in the tumor is actually very, very relevant for biologists because yeah. they expect stem cells to be far in between and not uh, not every uh, uh, every cell is expected mm -hmm. to express. So it's also very, very good that you see. Okay. Yeah, it would be interesting to look at what's associated, like within those spots, what, <laughs> what genes are highly associated, yeah. right? That's what. Yeah. Maybe there are other markers people don't know about, but you are now in the position to identify. Yeah, of course. So the reason I listed these genes is that because these genes are only identified by our methods and not others. And in our paper, we listed like 20 additional genes, for example. So uh, for the... Oh, oh, next. So, you said your the maximum gene set eighty. Yeah. Why there are among the five thousand genes only eighty of them annotated with multicellular organism with process? Uh, so is this this a link back to the previous stems comments? So actually. This gene set, uh, this is a functional enrichment analysis. We only focus on 290 yeah. genes we identified. So that's why there is only maximum is 80 rather than the five, total 5,000. That's kind of labeled incorrectly then. When people say gene set size, maybe yeah. the total gene set okay. number differentially expressed, spatially expressed. Oh, so it okay. So like the number think, spatially. Uh, the, okay, so the gene set analysis, so the gene set size is the, so remember, uh, as I introduced, uh, each dot represents a button, and uh, so in the gene set is uh, the number of genes in, uh, related to that button, not the, yeah. Yes. Character for the multiple testing. <clears throat> so the third data set we examined is uh, uh, from the mouse hypothalamus data, and uh, this is, is based on the Murphy technique. And uh, in this data set, there are 160 genes measured on about 5,000 single cells. And 115 genes are either markers or distinct uh, 150 genes are markers, so functional related to the hypothalamus, and the five genes are blank controls. Uh, so we didn't show the permutation results uh, for the special D here, uh, for the chelsea because this sample size. Analyzing one gene for this data set takes, uh, using chelsea takes 48 hours. 
And so because this gene has five con uh, negative controls, so we compare power based on the number of detected blank genes rather than use the post-discovery rate. And here, again, we show the Spark is the most powerful among the three. And here are some examples with major cell classes and the, the representing cell mark genes. Like the GAD1 is the cell mark genes for the inhibitory neuron, and the MBB4 is the cell mark gene for the major oligodendrocytes. And the last data set we examined is the mouse hippocampus data, and this is uh, this data is uh, uses the stick fish technique, and uh, we filter out the cells outside of the red square to adjust the border artifacts. And so, in total, we analyzed 250 genes measured on only one, 130 single cells. And the, from the uh, permutation, we can see that Spark and Chelsea uh, produce well calibrated type, uh, type 1 errors, and uh, Spark is also, again, the most powerful among these three. And because uh, it's a f 5 standard FDR, Spark can identify 70 genes, and uh, Special D identify 11. All, all those 11 overlapped with Spark, and uh, Chelsea can identify the four genes with three, uh, with only one overlapped with the previous two methods. So we can see that the gene expression pattern uh, ident uh, for the genes, SE genes identified by our uh, Spark or Special D show clear patterns, but the, for the Three genes only identified by the Chelsea, it seems like the gene expression is the uni uh, the expression of those genes are uh, uniformly in all the cells. Okay, so in summary, we develop a spark uh, to detect a specially differentiated expressor genes in special resolved transplant studies. And Spark produces calibrated uh, type 1 error controls and uh, is substantially more powerful than existing method. And this package is available on our web lab desk, uh, website, and uh, the preprint is available on the biochive and to appear in natural method. So, any questions? Uh, I'm wondering whether you can do imputation at the same time as you do as you detect it. I'm sorry. Uh, because for for lower testing, yes. you don't have much power to do that. But yeah. when you when you stack both matrices together in your three D, then you can borrow information or borrow information between uh, from from other uh, spatial patterns that you do for those things that are less. As you, you have so you saying like imputing? Right, or correct for the noise. Then you observe in those lower Yes, so then I think if we do like, so let's take this example. If we do the imputation, then uh, it's the pattern would be smooth, right? If we use borrow information from the Jason cells, then the no, no, you can borrow information from other genes. Other genes. Right. You you can just see your patterns are similar between those genes. Yeah, but yeah, okay, so but the problem is we don't know. First we don't know the uh, before the analysis we don't know that those genes show the similar expression pattern. Right. Only when we identify. So you are saying like once we identify that we can we do the further that analysis will be imputation? The less optimal way. So optimal way will be you you do imputation and pattern detection simultaneously. Right. Okay, then that should be like 
if we do the imputation. But uh, one problem is uh, why do we need to do the imputation? Because there's actually no zero inflation in this data set. And uh, with the new developers, I think uh, all the UMI based single cell sequencing, there is no uh, of uh, this uh, zero inflation problems. No, so. no, no, I'm not talking about zero inflation because uh, because essentially all genes are down sample. Yes. So you lose some. Uh, if you talk about that, then is this actually in Murphy's technique? Uh, the average expression counts is a one thousand. I see. Then never mind. Yeah. I don't know about it's, it. It's it's just a. Uh, for the special transcriptomic techniques, those are the expression value are low. But for the letter two, because it's image based method, and the counts are actually at least not low, it's like up, at least a 20 or 10 up to one song. So we're at the hour, so I think maybe any questions can be asked offline. Okay, thanks. Thank our speaker.